it's podcast 22 guys welcome back to me to me nah let's start again that's a terrible start you, avoid my conversation. you don't have to know what I used to do what up guys how you doing I am Johnny Kalawiza your host on yet another podcast on the Weezy 21 this is my channel and we do podcasts and vlogs uh, I'm back on the podcast uh, I came back last uh, I came back last week after not doing a podcast for about two months three months there's so much that went on so much other stuff I want to talk about um, and the main thing I, well, I, want, I want to start with what I'm going to move on to later on is ableism and what that means that's really the the general like plan for this role, this podcast but I want to start by talking about Spurs and what's been going on lately and how maybe we're back considering we won 5-0 but only against Belgrade you know I mean they've got to stop the rot Spurs maybe this performance has been that I don't know might nah it can't be I mean still problems players is it the players is it the manager nobody really knows it's hard to say really um, as a fan I don't know what to do I don't, I don't want to blame the manager people blaming the manager too much give him time because in the four years that he's been there he's improved us immensely as a team yeah we've still got eight of the same players but the style of play everything and of course Daniel Levy built this huge stadium got the best training facilities one of the best stadiums in Europe um, on da Daniel Levy's side can't blame him either really yeah we could have bought more players uh, spent a bit more money in the seasons where we could have won the league like where Leicester won the league that season those two seasons there around that time if we spent a bit more money got a few more star players it would have been different um, but yeah we've come quite far and Daniel Levy said he was going to build us a new stadium he built us a new stadium and a new training facility and it's just the team is suffering I think he's distracted by all this NFL money because excuse me he doesn't actually need he, do, he doesn't need us to succeed because he's, he, he's got he's got the NFL money coming in so on that front like does he really care I don't know it's hard to say but yeah that's what we've been going through as Spurs fans so then this great performance um, Lamela started the game the first time in the long time he started the game made a difference and Ali played a bit better um, and Dombele Sissoko of course um, and they rested Rose um, which I think was a good decision because against Watford playing as a wing back you didn't get forward like you're supposed to and we messed that game up a Watford game bearing in mind Watford are probably a bit better than this Belgrade team no offence um, and we struggled against Watford and that was a really boring game I don't know how we got a draw um, but yeah Son didn't start that game um, and that was a difference as well he made a huge difference great player on his hat trick subbed sadly but great performance all round Lossel also got his first time on the pitch you know so that was good to see uh, one for if back in it Dyer need, needs a good game so he came on as a sub so can't really say anything but if we play that same formation um, against Liverpool we might win we might do something and not get embarrassed um, Aurier will be the only player that will change um, because he got sent off last time so we'll see and for those of you who are Spurs fans up the Spurs you know um, we'll see what the future holds can we beat Liverpool? no but well maybe but just don't get embarrassed that's what I say just don't let us down I mean the Poch probably said to the players that you let, you're let letting your fans down uh, don't worry about me or each other just well you know what I mean and you know the fans come first and they're letting us down when they're not playing well because we know they can do so much better from what we did last year just follow that I mean out of the highs and the lows of last season 
just knackered everyone, I think. And some of the, the dressing room problems, apparently, nobody actually knows. But they're the same players of last year, same manager, you know, so something's happened. Don't know what. It won't be quite the same from now on. I don't know. Some players got to move, but not Poch. They're, they're quick to say that, a lot of fans. And it's unfair. I mean, he's done, he's take from where he's taken the, where we were when we, he was first coming in to where he's taken us now, it's a huge difference. We weren't title contenders before. Poch, top four maybe, yeah. With Redknapp and think, but before that we had Tim Sherwood and then Poch took over. I mean, yeah, maybe Levy made the decision to get him and it was a good decision, but maybe a bit of a lucky decision. You know, because you saw what he did at Southampton. Well, that wouldn't make it luck then, would it? But lucky that we managed to get him, literally. Uh, of course, he, he, he can do a lot with a small budget, but a small budget can only take you so far in the Premier League and Champions League. I mean, yeah, he did it at Southampton, but Spurs aren't Southampton. We're Spurs, and we've got higher aspirations. You know, so top four is not enough anymore. And we're struggling with that at the moment, so we need to get better, we need to fix the problem, get rid of the bad apples. Spurs, that's that's a tough one. See what happens weekend. Just don't be embarrassed. Just don't get us embarrassed, Spurs, come on. It's got what they've got to say to the players, you know. Try. Actually try at least. Give us something to cheer about. I mean, the stadium was pretty full despite the problems we're going for as a team. The games we're losing, you know. Or the leads we're taking and not keeping. But yeah, enough about football. Um well different type of football now, NFL. Um the Raiders played the Packers. The Oakland Raiders played the Green Bay Packers on the weekend. Uh, well, it was six PM here, like around lunchtime there I guess. Yeah, and that's when they show the NFL here. And it's the first time I actually sat down and watched an entire NFL game on the Sky coverage, apart from maybe one of the Super Bowls. But yeah, I'm really getting into my NFL, I'm starting to love that. Um, always checking out the highlights because it is better than when you watch it live with adverts every five minutes and it's very stop start as a game. But I love it, and uh, the Raiders on my team, as you already know. If you've seen the vlog, if you haven't, go back and check it out, find out why I support the Raiders. Um, I mean, if you watch them, you'll see why. But the Green Bay Packers are historic. Um, they've won like one of the first ever Super Bowls back in the day, over 60 years ago. They're like a historic team in the sport. You know, think about like Real Madrid or, or Man United, uh, like when with the history they have. It's that kind of level of team. Obviously, you've got the Patriots as well, but the Green Bay Packers are like another level to the Raiders team at the moment, who are also a historic team, very successful, but. At the moment, they're going for a re rebuilding phase, so they didn't quite do it. But the first half was really close, close calls in that game. Um, it's just like Derek Carr as a quarterback isn't as good as Rogers by by any means. Of course not. Rogers is another level. Like you can't compete with him. But it, it wasn't on his A game in the second half. Even in the first half, he. The first two quarters as well. He um, missed a few passes that would have been like touchdowns or at least first downs and so on. Um, compared to Rodgers who had a great game. Well for him it's another day at the office but we're still re still rebuilding at the Raiders and John Gruden is a solid coach. He's got experience. He, he used to co coach for the Packers so um, he almost had the beating of them in the first half. Um, First, when you get the points on the board first, you feel like you can win. It gives you that hope. Um, before the game, I was full of hope too. And it's just exciting to see this new team building, um, get, building momentum. This is a, this was a more difficult game than the average game, but yeah. Overall, they're going forward in the right direction. But there's so many teams I like to watch. Like, I enjoyed the, the Minnesota Vikings against Detroit Lions as well. That was a really close game to the end, when Detroit just ran out of steam, I think. Um, but yeah, 
NFL is my, one of my new fan favourite sports. Um, it's been around for years, obviously. I mean, like I've, I've heard about it and I've known about it over the years, but not till now was I really like interested. Because I had a reason to, you know. And that was my reason. Sorry, my chair's really squeaky, so. If you hear weird noises, that's why. Got, got to be comfortable for the podcast. You know what I'm saying? People in like, you know, you got to be comfortable when you're on the podcast. Because it's like, you know, it's just talking, you know. you got to be relaxed and just go with it. Not like when I do a vlog when it's just edit and stuff and, you know, practice and all this and get out the right message and don't make it too long and all this. Um, but yeah, I'm just more relaxed. It's been a busy few weeks as well, again. Uh, like I said the other week, I had my cousin over and a good friend of mine from Italy came over. Um, so we hang out with them a bit. So that was good. It's always good to hang out with friends from across the... well, from across the world, if you like. Um, and she's going to be living in London soon, so it's going to be fun. You're going to see her more often in the vlogs. Um, and ho hopefully the same old day trips I always make. It's a bit colder, so not as many, but, you know. Still get out, you know, football. Um, football, not for a while, till November the 15th now. So I go back to Nottingham to continue the uh, championship season. And we'll see. So we've got a lot of things coming up. Um, I'm not going to say the, the C word as in Christmas because it's too far away. And that's what I'm going to say there because when you start hearing Christmas songs this early, it's really annoying. So if you're one of them people that, that just, you love Christmas, but come on, this early, don't like wish time away. It's not even Halloween yet. That's, that's more, that's a lot closer. That's a lot nearer, so. That's more the time we're in Halloween. I mean, having seen the Joker, I mean, wow. Wow, I mean, there's gonna be a lot of people with that face paint for Halloween. Like, they timed it perfectly. Like, a few years ago, Suicide Squad came out. So everyone went, all the girls went as Harley Quinn. All the guys went as, like, the Joker or something. Um, but yeah, that was a terrible version of the Joker. Joe Leto is probably the worst version. But then again, this new film is just, yeah, it's the birth of the Joker, so it's different, you know. It's not a, your average superhero movie. It's not, it's not meant to be anyway. Think of it set like that era, 80s. Um, so it's like, it feels like you're watching Taxi Driver, that kind of film, or Fight Club, like a guy that's got this figments of imagination and then turns out real life is a bit different and he's a psycho basically um, but I don't want to spoil the film really or do I? Uh, but yeah it does inspire like inspire? completely wrong word because it, it shouldn't but that's why people were so worried because they're like it's going to inspire people to you know be anti-establishment and be what the joke be like, I don't know, but get ideas, you know what I mean, but the film did take ideas from actual people who, who did do shootings, you know what I mean, the way he turned out and the, the mental issues he had, which in some cases are, are real, you know, in some cases, it's quite realistic in that sense what happens in it, and watching it, like the, the average person, it will, it will inspire fear because like, you realise that a lot of people aren't far from becoming like that. You know, one push and, you know, flip of a switch, you know. It's like when you see homeless people, a lot of people ignore them because they don't want to enter the thought that that could easily happen to them and things can change like that. And that's what I got watching this film, The Joker. Joker. You call it The Joker, but you know. Joaquin Phoenix always does a good villain, you know. But this was different, this was another level, and Jack Nicholson, who played the Joker as well in the past, did warn him it will change his life. Jack Nicholson being the same guy who played so many crazy people in different films, like The Shining, you know, so many films that, that he plays those kind of characters, freaky, kind of bit crazy, 
dangerous at the same time. But when you watch the Joker, you actually feel sorry for him most of the time. And when he does finally fight back, you're thinking, good, good for you, stand up for yourself. And then he takes it that psychotic step further. You know, it is a dark film, it's not meant to be fun. But one of the best films I've seen recently is probably that and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's just funny and different, different. but Tarantino. Um, but yeah, Joker, definitely go and see it. It's worth seeing if you're a fan of that character. I mean, who isn't? Heath Ledger stole the show in Batman. And obviously he wasn't the main character in that, so it would have been, it was different, like, you know. Obviously he, um, he's not around anymore, Heath Ledger, so he couldn't have played this one. But I think he could have done a great job. A great job. If you think about it, it's like how he became the Joker. Basically how the character develops from slightly, you know, crazy guy that's on some meds and you know for you know not but the thing is like a broken home you know single mother brought him up but I won't say what happens in the end but you know that kind of upbringing and not too rich you know low working class if you know what I mean it's like the breathing ground for people like that I'm not saying everyone from that kind of lifestyle ends up like that but it doesn't help and in his situation there's a number of things that added up you know and he was this unfortunate guy and always picked on you know it happens you get people like that in that situation people who feel like no one cares about them or their situation a lot of us can feel like that more than we think you know um, and in his case it got to him and it led to what it led to you know and in real life there are people like that that end up in that way and it's just it's making you understand mental health and that kind of area and what it entails and what people like that go through and in his case the government didn't care about him anymore they didn't give him any more meds and then you know that didn't of course that doesn't help because they don't really care at the end of the day there's only so much they can do for each person like here at the NHS they give you so many sessions of whatever you need and if you're not well at the end of it that might doesn't necessarily mean they give you more help like psychiatrists and stuff and all that um, a lot of it is private you know you have to get your own help but like in his situation you can't can you when you've got no money and you know there's nothing else you can do and it's, it's sometimes it's circumstance that leads to all these things but from the beginning you can tell something's off with this guy he's already on meds to begin with and he's laughing for no reason in public in random situations which in the other Joker mo appearances the other people playing the Joker he never really thought that the, the, the laughing was a condition he thought it was an evil laugh that he did but it's more like a condition that he has just laughing randomly which is part of his character so you think it's just him making an evil laugh like in, in a certain situation like in the movie or something but it's not as part of his like mental condition or part of his condition I don't know but yeah definitely do check it out but, but bear with this in mind and yeah they didn't want it to inspire people in the wrong way to get ideas from it you know but it is anti-establishment and the people who goes after are wealthy and rich and the rich and powerful and in our everyday lives we do kind of I don't know not despise rich people and successful people but people who have got there dishonestly or you know the rich and powerful the famous not necessarily fake but you know what I mean the rich and powerful people that don't necessarily deserve all the things they've got and maybe don't appreciate people that work a lot harder for what they got some rich people, yeah, they've worked hard. Most rich people probably worked hard if they're in a certain business. But at the same time, they've probably done something bad to get there. And this film, he like stands up for the, the little guy, the average person, the average citizen, you know. So in that sense, it might inspire people, but in the wrong way. In the 
and then fly them away, which is never good. But it's like, yay, stand up for the people, you know. Even though he does it in an evil, crazy, twisted, messed up way. That is like horrific, but brilliant at the same time. And makes you really understand the character more. Like Heath Ledger's version was just amazing and scary and crazy. He made it his own because before that the Joker never had long hair. And he changed that. And this was like a almost a tribute or homage to that. To the same Heath Ledger Joker from Dark Knight. And watching that the other night, I almost forgot how good it was. And then you compare it to the Whacking Phoenix. It's different, but it is the birth of the character. And how things start. And then at the end, you're left wondering what happened? What will happen? What happens next, you know? What does this mean? I just hope Robert Patterson doesn't play Batman. And, well, I just hope they leave Whacking Phoenix alone and leave the Joker alone because if they include him in, in a version of Batman where Robert Patterson is Batman and he's the Joker, no, I don't think it'll work. As a standalone movie, this is good. But people, so many people watched it because they know the character and they want to know more. But sometimes the mystery of him, of Joker, is what gets you. Is what inspires fear and, like, yeah, mystery is kind of, makes people fearful in some ways. And you never knew what he was going to do next. What next evil plan or joke he had in mind. And it's just ironic because in a movie he's saying that his life is a joke. And he finds it funny even if nobody else does. Hence the Joker, but he's sad on the inside. So it's like it's weird that he's called the Joker, it's ironic. But a great movie and I wanna see it again to be honest. But yeah, I did a little review about it, not so in depth, but just a quick one, you know, just to say how it made me feel really. And yeah. Definitely worth a watch. But remember, like, it is just a film. It's just a film. Uh, it's Gotham, it's made up, you know. But yeah, let's move on to ableism. Um, something I've been hearing a lot about recently through fr disabled friends of mine on Instagram and Twitter. Um, it's like any sort of discrimination, really, be it racial or ageist or sexist or any of those one of the isms basically and it I never really thought about things this way like as a disabled person I don't yeah I'm reminded all the time every day when I wake up you know when I go to bed I'm reminded of how much I physically can and can't do but at the same time I never thought about it from this point of view of ableism like being treated, obviously you're treated different because you're different to someone else. Everyone's, there's so many people that are treated different because of being different and it's unfair. People should be treated equally despite their differences. And ableism talks about that and I should really look it up, shouldn't I? I might actually look it up on my phone because it's interesting. I might ask Siri actually. Hey Siri. Define ableism. Okay, I found this on the web for Hey Siri, define ableism. Check it out. <laughs> you got it wrong. Alright, let's see the definition. Because this, this is interesting. Ableism. Discrimination or prejudice against individuals with disabilities. And that's any disability, and it goes back to Joker, like there was ableism in that because people saw him as crazy and mentally ill and they kept their distance. And that's un unfair because if anything, someone with any disability, let alone mental health, physical, they need, they need to be understood basically. Not understood, accepted. Even if you don't understand the condition someone has, just accept them for who they are because at the end of the day, we're all human beings. But, um, yeah, that's ableism. Basically, what, what I said it was. 
Shut up, Siri. Bloody Siri. But yeah, it's an interesting subject. It's a tough subject. And you just have to. I don't know, even me, I don't understand it fully, but I don't always feel it if someone treats me different. Because I know no different, because I've always been me, you know, with my disability, so I wouldn't know how someone that's not disabled would be treated. But I do notice it that some people treat me different compared to others. Like, friends, family, they don't treat you different. They treat you the same as anyone else. I don't get any special treatment at home. I get called a dick just as much as the next guy. And me and my brother have normal arguments, normal fights, as brothers do, you know. It's, in the family and friend situation, I don't always feel that, but it's like when I meet like mutual friends and other people that don't necessarily know me. Like when I mess up the handshake. That always happens because I'm shit with handshakes, physically, if you know what I mean. So if someone goes to shake my hand, um, I might not be ready, so I might not have my hand out. And it'll take me a good two minutes to get my arm into a position, position to shake their hand and then they won't even realise and then it would just mess up a handshake and then it would just be awkward after that but that's not able to just, just me that's me not saying that you have to grab my hand and shake my hand because that's all it's because I feel awkward saying that I shouldn't see that's ableism in itself and I don't know I'm probably guilty of it too treating other people differently but because they're able, you know what I mean? Like, I can say, I can be more confident talking to another disabled person about certain things that they can relate to compared to an able bodied person. But then I have really a lot, I have closer friends that are able bodied. And, you know, I, you, you, can, you get days when you just feel that experience ableism more than others. But I never thought about things that way. Um, I just thought, People treated me how they treated me. Um, it's just difficult, like, everyone judges everyone, you know? Uh, they, don't, they assume, like, maybe, yeah, physically you're not as able as everyone else, but mentally I'm fine, you know? And vice versa with mentally ill people, maybe they're mentally ill, but physically they're fine. And in that case, it's hard to tell. So you don't know who you're meeting on a daily basis. So treat people fairly, you know? and don't judge someone because they're different. Um, yeah, and there's different situations like where like I'm saying thank you to people when they should be saying thank you to me or vice versa. Or when I'm saying sorry for being like say I'm in the way of someone, I'm saying sorry. Why am I saying sorry for being in the way? You know? But I'm a polite person anyway. But then again, can't show people too much respect otherwise. They walk all over you in this world, that's the thing. And you don't know what people are going through, like, able or not, you know. Uh, just just the want to be treated normal. It's not always e as easy as you think. And I feel like when I go to other countries too, I obviously get kids that stare all the time. That's not ableism, it's just them being curious and stuff. You know, it's the adults telling them after, don't stare. Like, oh yeah, maybe tell them don't stare, but like, I'm not gonna attack you, Jesus. You know, like they, they assume people assume a lot of of people with disabilities. They assume a lot more, and it's unfair. Um, I'm just speaking in general. Like, it's not always happened to me that badly, but I've seen it happen to other people and heard stories of how people have been treated, friends of mine and stuff. So, I mean, it's not talked about on the level of racism or sexism or ageism but it's just as big an issue and maybe I deal with it a lot on a daily basis and I don't know maybe well I'm quite a happy guy anyway but it doesn't mean things don't get to me you know I've always said like as despite disability I'm a happy guy anyway I'm quite happy in my own life in my situation despite all that people think oh poor kid or this no, well, yeah, obviously I get down when I feel things like ableism, but it doesn't mean, just because I'm happy on the outside doesn't mean I'm necessarily happy on the inside, like with the way people treat me in certain situations. I might have a smile on my face, but it doesn't 
necessarily mean that that's the feeling I'm going through at that moment. I might just sometimes you laugh like wait if someone's treating you, you know, you just laugh at the situation. Like I can't believe they would act that way. Um, but yeah, it it's it's not a new issue. That's the thing. People have always been judged because they were different, less now than they used to be. I mean, look at the Bible, what it, what it says about different types of people, if you're religious, that is, you know. And, you know, we've got to accept everyone, though, so. Ableism. Yeah, I'm going to. I mean, I'm definitely going to do more research into it for the future and understand it better, but that's what, what I'm seeing from. From my point of view. That's ironic. The minute I stopped the video just to get a drink, the phone started ringing. Just luckily it wasn't on the podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah, ableism. Uh, do let me know what you think of it as well, from both perspectives. Like, I'd love to know the perspective of an able bodied person, what, how they act when they meet a disabled person. But, I mean, it depends because if you never met the same person before, I would be, I would be the same. I don't know I don't know how I'd be, but like I do it. I learn to accept more people who they are. You know, even if they are different. There's other disabilities that I will meet people with that disability for the first time and probably have ableism myself. Can I have that? Can I be? I don't know. Being disabled, I don't know. But like, if I meet a deaf person, I wouldn't know what to do because I haven't met many deaf people. But I'd want to be nice, be nice to people, you know. Want to make them feel normal or what? Wel not normal, but welcome, like you know, not an outcast. Because you can feel like that sometimes. But then again, I feel like everyone's got their own battles anyway. But when you're a disabled person, you've got more than that. you got a bigger battle, if you know what I mean. Everyone treating you different at the same time. Like, you know, there's normal people who just get driven to depression because of feeling alone and all that and getting no attention, you know, maybe getting attention and in the wrong way, I don't know. Like, people don't know. It's, what, it's the unknown that can cause things like this. Even with racism, it's like ignorance. Not No offence to anyone, you know. And, you know, there's people that that meet, that have a lot of friends that are disabled or know a disabled person. And so when they meet another disabled person, they feel the need to try and talk to you as if you're like, oh, I've got a friend who's in a wheelchair. Do you know them? Like, no, not every disabled person knows every other disabled person. You know, I mean, even my parents would be like, oh look, there's a person in the wheelchair, go and talk to them. Like, no, I'm my own person. Like, if you're able-bodied and you see another able-bodied person, you go, oh no, look, look, it's another able-bodied person. Let me go up to them and talk to them. You know? No. So I don't, I don't know why people assume that of me. I don't know every disabled person. I, I, I might, might see another disabled person. Do I feel the need to talk to them? In, maybe yes, maybe no, but don't patronise me, you know. Um, and I've, I've noticed that about maybe it's older people and stuff, but like, I don't, come on, you know. What it's in 2019? Are, are, we, are we doing this still? Um, some people just won't talk, you know. Um, like, well, with me, I probably I look like a kid anyway. I look quite young for my age. But then still, like, don't assume, like, I'm brain dead, come on, like, you know, I, 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 I can still socialise. People just assume that we're all the same. Like, they assume everyone has a certain disability, and that's it. There's so many different disabilities on the, the, the spectrum, you know, visible and non-visible. And there's a lot of disability hierarchy, like, oh, my condition is more severe than yours, so I'm entitled to more. No, that's not fair. Different entitlements, yes, to the, because it, that's how the government do it, and it's unfair. I know. Like, I don't, I, I, I don't know if the government's messed up anyway. NHS, all that, 
it's better than a lot of countries get. Bear in mind, you know. But you know, it's got to stop this hierarchy of disabilities, like people that are more or less able, you know, getting judged upon that. Like, oh, you're not entitled to it as much because you've only got a dodgy leg or something. Like, I can say that. Like, if you're able, you can't really say that, can you? Uh, but. No, I feel like, in that sense, out in public fighting a battle, a battle every day in that sense, as well as your own things going on in your life. But, like, if I'm sad one day, it might not be because I'm because of my disability, and it probably won't be. It'll be of some stupid thing I've created in my head. But a lot of the times, it can stem from experiencing some sort of ableism or feeling left out in some way. But you've got to make your own path, make your own friends and people that you like. Like normal, like normal people don't talk to normal people anyway. Like two everybody people on the street might not talk. But then again, you might strike up a conversation with someone else the next day. You know, it varies. So I wouldn't say I feel that, but it I create the problems in my own head, and a lot of people do. I would just say people do. But that awkwardness is there sometimes when you meet a mutual friend or someone you never met friend of a friend or something. Like me, it's with the handshakes. Um, because they've never met me before, they don't, they don't know. Like, people that know me will grab my hand or, like, whatever, give me a hug or whatever, you know, whatever people you know do. Um, but people that don't wouldn't, so. But maybe that's my fault. I've got to not be so nervous when I meet people myself. And whether, I, whether I'm able-bodied or disabled, I would always be the same person, really. Do you know what I mean? I w it wouldn't make me a different person. Maybe I wouldn't be as strong mentally as I am. I don't know. Yeah, I'd probably be a bit of a wuss. If I was able-bodied, because we wouldn't have no, no mental battles. On this scale, anyway. So it make, I would say it makes me stronger in that sense. Yeah, it's a superpower. It's, it's like a superpower. Really, because you stand out in the crowd. You're not boring and, like, just a standard person, are you? Got something, something that some people see as less, and someone else is unfair. That's what categorizes disabled someone that's like less than someone else. But that's wrong, because no one's less than anyone else. Because what you don't have in something, you make up for with something else. You know, other. In my case, with mental toughness and like my academic side, I guess. I'm not saying I'm the brightest guy, but I do. I probably do overthink things sometimes, but that's what I make up make make up for it for. What I make, you know, what I don't have in physicality, maybe I have on the on the mental scale, you know. And some people it's the opposite or vice versa. Everyone's different, like I said, like ableism, you know. So yeah, if I feel down one day, it might not. It's not necessarily because of my disability, you know might just be something normal that's pissing me off like anyone um, but like I said treat people equally because there can be hidden disabilities like if I have a go at someone that's using a lift and they're able, they appear able-bodied to me doesn't mean they are maybe they got a heart condition maybe they got something that does that stops them walking long distances or a lung condition or recently had surgery you know so you just don't know I've treated people like that before and they've been another disabled person but then there's people who's got like a, there'll be some people like, for instance, if they've got a dodgy knee, they'll get, get a disabled badge and they get all this stuff that they shouldn't really have. It's because they've got a dodgy knee because they tripped over once. Or that, I don't know, a bit of cartilage is missing from your knee. Whatever. But if, you know, if you've got that kind of thing, then don't milk it. Come on. I mean, a lot, I mean, some disabled people do milk it a lot and get every penny they, they're entitled to. Not, I mean, they get more than every penny they're entitled to. And some are just unluckily too honest and get not enough when it comes to care and stuff and the money they give you to pay the people who, who look up, who help you physically in that sense. And that's it, it's no more than that. It's because you need physical help doing things that other people do themselves doesn't mean mentally you need the same help. You know, I'm. Oh, I got a message, but I, I look after my own things, finance, 
things like that I'm with it mentally and some able-bodied people able-bodied they are they do nothing all day and night they do nothing and they got all that and they can physically use their arms and legs and everything they can do so many things but they don't and then me I do so much anyway despite that despite the physical disadvantages that I have and I've always had and I'm used to and some people they might gain a disability later in life and it'll be really frustrating because they look back at when they were able and they realise all the things they could have done and never did and just wasted their perfectly good body if you know what I mean in that sense so don't wait, waste time I don't waste time you know what I mean because you never know what the next day will bring you know treat every day like it's your last and your first at the same time like you want to learn something new not don't ever be I mean people who say they're bored are stupid like why are you bored just do there's so many things you can do I mean I don't get bored I get fed up myself when it's too cold for me to go out because I hate the can't cope with the cold you know if it's, if it's like that I'm over here editing or reading a book or at worst playing a video game and then maybe doing a live stream um, but I'm always doing something you know do, watching another YouTuber learning absorbing what they do in their vlogs or another podcast um, not just to learn but for fun as well so I enjoy it if, I'm, if you enjoy something then obviously you're going to have passion for that, that thing and you're going to want to do it as an everyday thing which is what I do, I watch a lot of YouTube and podcasts and I make podcasts and vlogs you know I love sports and I talk about sports here sometimes so any of my passions come through here and some of them are thanks to being disabled actually like Pouchy Football would have never known about it you know um, and it's a great sport and so many volunteers and that really breaks down the barriers of ableism when you play Pouchy Football and when you meet so many different people with different disabilities and their families you know people who've been around disabled people they treat you equally because they know what it feels like in, in one sense some don't yeah because some people are just some old generations you know like and is, is this ableism I don't know I get, I get talked down to a lot I don't like this like an adult's talking to me like I'm a kid like they wouldn't talk to a normal an able bodied 26 year old like that yeah I'm lower down but it doesn't mean I'm a kid I'm maybe the same height as a kid sitting down but it doesn't mean I'm a kid you know talk to me like a proper person don't need you talking down to me like I'm a kid like don't simplify what you're saying because you think I'm an idiot like just because I'm physically shorter <laughs> I'm not though you know what I mean I'm sitting down but I laugh about these things and sometimes you just got to go with it if I let that get to me that much then I will be half the man I was you can't let it get to you message to other t disabled people I mean you have all this entitlement and stuff not entitlement but I mean like we're entitled to so much to make us feel like we live a normal life to some extent you know and yeah I mean I don't think about my disability every second so a situation that will piss me off because I realise that will be the thing maybe stopping me but there's always a way around it and I use my and I think about it and then things aren't so bad you think about every situation just rethink it and then think what can I do to counteract this you know and things like when I'm meeting up with people it's okay if I can't get there and I have to cancel it's okay I don't have to go out of my way for everybody people even if they would for me, like sometimes some days I just can't do some de days I feel stronger than others and I, I go out when I want, you know but not because not always because it's like I choose to like some days I feel well, some days I don't I feel like going out um, it can be a mental, it can be a physical thing or both um, but most of the time I want to go out because it makes me feel better about life, you know, sitting at home isn't always isn't you know got things to do it's fine but still I'd rather be out creating memories and making moments and that 
with friends and stuff. I mean, when I can, I do, but a lot of them have their own lives, you know, and you've got to, you've got to do your own thing sometimes. And I realise that, and that's why I kick on with the vlogs sometimes. And yeah, I've been slow up on them recently, just because I've been out so much with friends and stuff and family. You know, I mean, some say with people that in their younger days might not have as many friends as other people, but trust me now, if you want to start your own nation or take over the world, all you need is free people. You know, if you want to overthrow a government, all you need is free, old, free G's for life. Free day one mates, not necessarily day ones, but free good friends and you can do a lot. You can feel unstoppable. And I, I've, got, I've got that amount or more. Well, you've got extended friends and stuff. But yeah, that tight group of friends, you don't need many. People think you need loads and loads of friends and all this. Oh, look at me, I've got all these friends. Yeah, half of them talk shit about you behind your back. Have some proper friends that are always there. And vice versa. Those are proper friends, you know. Despite how far or how near. Distance shouldn't matter. And you learn that, and I've got friends like that that have come from over the world to meet me here. It's amazing, and I mean, ableism or not, I mean, that's nothing to do with it. I still have my friends and stuff, and some people aren't so lucky, but you just got to go out there. There'll be some, there'll be people you relate to, and some people still go through the ableism. Some mutual friends and stuff. I experienced that, but I don't always, I don't get offended and go, I don't like you for that reason. You've got to teach people and they've got to learn. So then when they meet another disabled person, they won't have the same ableism in their in their brain, you know, the same approach. They'll be more understanding, more, treat them like a normal person. You don't need to be friendly with me, you know? You don't need to be extra friendly or anything, like, just treat me normal, like, they're, 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 people like don't want to swear around me, you know? I'm not a kid, you know, like, I'm a normal person, you don't have to like, change for me, just be yourself. And a lot of disabled people find it hard to be themselves. Because, for me, it's like, if I get drunk, right, and act drunk, people think that's just, I'm like, there's something wrong with me. That, like, and I've got some sort of mental issue. I'm not, not discriminating against anyone, but you know what I'm saying? Like, and if I don't drink enough, uh, and I'm just, sitting there not necessarily talking as much as everyone else. I'm not saying that's if I'm not drinking, but if I'm not talking much then people also think I've got some sort of mental issue or disability that's preventing me from talking, you know what I mean? Maybe I just don't want don't fancy talking much. Maybe I'm just not a talkative person one certain day. And if I drink too much I'm acting crazy. They think, well he is crazy all the time. I am crazy, but like not in that sense. I've got a screw loose, yeah, every person has. Not on the level of Joker, but you never know. So that was the interesting thing about that film. That that's like, like being being treated different because of being different. And that's what led him to be crazy and go crazy and start killing loads of people. I'm not saying I'm going to do that, but think about it. You know, from that point of view. And that was back then in the 80s, a lot more discrimination. And so now it's not so bad. I could moan. I'm not moaning, right? I'm just saying what, what I'm feeling, what I've gone through. You know, and some people feel it more than others. And it gets to them more than others. And I understand that if it does, I, I don't, I'm not surprised. Because it's difficult some days. And whether I like it or not, it happens anyway. It's going to keep happening. But some people are still kind. It doesn't make them not kind or, you know, but be considerate as well. Like, if you've got your pram and you're in the, the disabled bit on the bus, get out the bloody way or get off the bus and let me on the bus, please. I'm not making way for you, like, you're saying, can you move so I can fit my pram in? No. Get your own space, you know? It says give way, you know? And, but I don't, use that as an excuse. Like, yeah, 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 you got to move out of way. I don't use it as an... I don't act all big about it, like, I'm, I'm better than anyone else. Like, in actual fact, that space makes me feel confined to that, I don't know. 
makes me feel like that's what you see see when you see me. Like the sign of a disabled badge or whatever, that's what you see when you see me. But I'm a human being too, I've got feelings. I'm not a machine. Though I may look like that to some kids. You know? You know what I mean? A chair is an extension of me, in that sense. So if you kick my chair, you're kicking me. So, you know, I'd freaking dent your kneecap with my, with my chair, you know, it's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah. Well, then here you've got so many different cultures and stuff, and they have different opinions, different views on disabled people or different people in different cultures, like people that are, certain people that are homophobic. Because in their religion, it doesn't. They don't. That religion, their religion doesn't agree with that. Things like that. It's unfair. It's a modern world, you know. It's 2019. Still got these issues. Um, but yeah, there are different cultures, and maybe in their culture, they've never seen a disabled person in their country, wherever they're from. You know? I mean, in Italy, I feel it in a different way, if not more, and it frustrates me. Like I wouldn't live there, because you get. You get looked at completely like you're a complete alien in some ways. And what's wrong with being different? There's nothing wrong. Celebrate being different. It's better to be different. I enjoy it, but sometimes you don't when you're getting stared at because of that. And people don't see you normally. Like, like when if I'm flirting, flirting with a girl, for example, they'll see it as cute and that's it. They won't see it as any more than that. It's like if a I don't, know. I don't know what to compare it to, but you know what I mean. They won't. They'll just assume nothing works down there. When it does, in my case, you know, it's, it's about honesty. <laughs> you know, in Italy maybe I feel it more. But then I, I, hanging out with my family and friends, I don't feel it within them. It's just when someone from the outside meets you, and they're treating you different. Everyone else treating you normal, and it, it kind of makes them realise. You know, and they assume that like I'm, I'm that I don't drink or smoke or do anything. But I drink, yeah. I, I'm I'm more crazy than the next guy. I drink more alcohol than some able-bodied people, and I I can cope with it better. You know, I'm not a lightweight, that's for sure. And then people see me drinking. You really you drink that much? You drink? Oh, come on, shut up. You know. Like I'm drinking a Jaeger myself. Like, oh, that's that's too strong for you, and I'm like, what? You're telling me that. He, he used to drink whiskey, you know? I'll tell you what, that drink never starts to taste nice. Whiskey, never. Um, but yeah, just the need to be treated equally. And that, sometimes that means calling me a dickhead, fine. You know what I mean? Just treat me normal, don't like, don't wrap me in cotton wool, you know? Like, oh no, you might get upset. No, I'm tougher than the rest, than a lot of you anyway. Like, uh, in a figure, figuratively speaking, like a lot of people think they've gone through a lot, and then they meet me, and it's another perspective. Like you think you got problems. Like yeah, you moan about you, you don't get paid n enough. You work these long hours. You're tired. You know, you want to go to the gym more and all this. Yeah, these are issues, but not on the my scale. Like they're little things to me. Like someone that's physically fit as a fiddle, and like. Like a geezer that's, that's like wedge or muscly, like it don't, it don't mean anything to me. You maybe you're committed to working out, yeah, but it don't mean you got it don't mean you got a big brain or anything. It don't mean you actually use your brain on a daily basis. You know, got all these muscles and stuff, but have you got any grit, any toughness in you? You know what I mean? Mental toughness. No matter how physically fit you are, because I haven't got that luxury, but I make up for it mentally. And some people just physically, it just, just doesn't make me appreciate them anymore as a person. It's how you treat others and how you make people feel. You know, you can be as wedge as they are, as they come. You can be a bodybuilder forever. But you can still be a dickhead and like, not necessarily be a nice person and have no friends and be depressed. Even if you're that muscly and like a specimen, a perfect specimen in that sense. Maybe in other areas you're not. You know, if you're on all those steroids, you're not going to be good in bed, are you? Because it's all shrunk down there. Simple as. Simple as. And if any of you are offended by this, fine, I don't care. I'm beyond caring, like, 
You can't underestimate. You can't overestimate the power of not giving a shit. Yeah, be nice. People care about people and treat people how you want to be treated. But like, don't care what people actually deeply think. Like, I've got to embrace the art, the art of not giving a shit. Because what else have I got? <laughs> you know, if I really cared about what everyone thought, then I wouldn't do anything. I wouldn't go out the door. And for a long time that did occupy my mind a lot and my thoughts and it shouldn't you know you should do what you want regardless people are staring or they're not staring but in my sense I'm like well if you're staring I might as well look good while you're doing it so I, you know I, I look after myself I do my hair wear nice clothes you know because while you're looking I might as well look good you know might as well I mean what's the point otherwise I mean some people are just like I don't care but like with me, I'm getting all this attention, I might as well make the most of it in some ways. <laughs> nah, I mean, some days I, I get a kick out of it, and like some days it really winds me up, it's ableism. Like, you can really toy with people. Like, I don't know. But, um, ableism, yeah, I, I didn't notice it as that way. Just noticed there's people treating me different. The word ableism never really came to mind till recently, and I'm thinking about it a lot more. And like, people that are different are treated differently. I treat other people differently. Um, if they're a bit different, I don't know. And there's a lot of issues that are even more serious, like racism, sexism, ableism, all that. You know, the L LGBT stuff against people like that. Like that's. You gotta accept everyone, you know. I mean, religion is the thing that gets in the way of all this. And you start talking religion and politics, then you just mess everything up. We're all human beings, that's it. And poli all politicians are corrupt, as far as I know, or paedophiles or something. Um, but yeah, it's been interesting talking about this. It's got me thinking about it a lot more. But I really want to check that text and then come back to you, if that's alright. But you won't even notice. I mean, it's supposed to be a one hour long podcast, but I'm stopping every now and then, alright. So, if you haven't noticed that already, if I haven't made it obvious anyway. Um, but yeah. No, but yeah, I mean, going back to ableism. The thing with the handshakes is just not, it's not ableism. It's just me not telling people that. I've got a dodgy hand, basically. Um, never forget, I think it ha happened when was the most funny time was probably, um, yeah, uh, one of my mates is uh, his girlfriend that I was meeting for the first time. Like, I had my arm there ready, but then, like, at the last second, I like to try and reach better with my hand. I kind of moved, I put my arm, my hand down, and then to like move forward, to move my hand forward. In that moment, you thought like I re rejected the handshake. Then it just looks like I rejected the handshake. The whole time, I was like, and then the eye contact after was like, oh hi, and then no handshake. And it was the most awkward thing ever. And I was just cracking up. My brother was that uh, saying to me like, like what were you on about there? You and your handshakes. And I, uh, but I'm not the only one. I mean, everybody people struggle with handshakes too. Like you see those those. Someone gives you some limp, soft handshake. You're like, come on. There's nothing wrong with you. Give me a proper handshake. Squeeze my hand. I want to know who you are. Like, by a handshake, you can tell who someone is. With me, it doesn't count. But, because, like, I've got a dodgy hand, you know what I mean? But, <laughs> with the average person, you can tell a lot about someone from a handshake, and I messed it up. Yeah, he's not with that girl anymore, so it doesn't really matter anymore. Don't have to face the embarrassment anymore. Uh, but, like, it happens a lot, like, when I... I don't know, it happens more with with, with females than, than males. Why am I being so scientific about this? With, with birds, with girls, like, that are around anywhere near my age, it happens. If, I don't, if I've never met them before, it's just awkward. Like, friends of cousins and stuff. First meeting is always just awkward. Um, handshake or no handshake. I'm just weird, because, like, I don't know. I'm one of them. I'm not, I'm not smooth. Like my brother is around women, you know what I mean? Depends if I know them or not. Like sometimes it works out fine, sometimes you just turn out. 
to be completely awkward and weird and they're like, oh, how cute at the end of it. Like, no, I'm not trying to be cute. Uh, but yeah, it's quite funny, really. But that's not really ableism, I would say. But in some cases it is because they just assume you can't do anything physically in that sense. And, and that's, that's annoying. That is annoying. Like, from an honest point of view. Um, don't be judging, you know what I mean? You get to know someone is different, but like, don't be assuming things. Like, you know, I'm a, I, I, I'm, I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's an awkward one. And nothing to really stop that in some ways. Because you, you would judge someone if they're different to you. And you would, you would assume certain things. Just don't assume. That's what I'm saying. Just be open to different things and different people, different opinions. Because even if you don't agree with someone's opinion, you still have to respect them. You know I mean, that's, that's a different subject altogether, but you know. You want to be treated normal, really, not any better or not any worse. Because that makes you feel weird too when you get, yeah, I want some respect, but like the normal amount. You know, no more than that. Because, like I said, people rap you cotton wool, like, oh, this and that, like, people use it as an excuse, oh, we're disabled badge and all this, like, come on. I mean, I got all this, but, like, I don't, I don't milk it, that's for sure. Well, I'm, I'm entitled to what I'm entitled to, but I need to make me, it's, to make me feel, does it make me feel more normal? No. And, I, I, the art, like I said, the art of not caring. Not giving a shit, you know, um, because it it can be a prison if you're worried about what people think of you. And as a disabled person, it happens more. Like you're worrying more about what people think. But let them think; they're going to think something anyway, whether you feel like they do or not. Um, just depends how you treat how they treat you. Like sometimes you've got to treat praise just as bad. This is the same way you would treat criticism. Or people treating you nice as, as well as people treating you bad in the same way. Okay, and then go on with it. You know, thank you. Um, see you later. That's it. Don't treat it any different. I mean, some people, I feel ableism through people who give me too much respect and through people who give me not enough. So then, maybe from your point of view, like, well, what do you want then? You know? Not too much of this, not enough of that. You know what I mean? Like, there's somewhere, we've got to meet in the middle somewhere. That's what I'm trying to say, really. You know, I don't want all this fancy treatment. Like, come on. I'm a normal person, too. On the inside, you know? Maybe don't look like it, but I am, you know what I mean? Um, and, yeah, when you, I think back, and there's been times where it is ableism, you know? But you can't just be offended by everyone that feels that way, because it might be ignorance, like I say. Like, I, if I meet a deaf person, I won't know how to act. I've never met a deaf person. If I meet a blind person, I just know... Like, what they're hearing is your voice. And that's how they're forming their image of you. So what you say... Is really important. But even your body language, if they can't... Someone's blind, they might not necessarily see your body language. But they can sense it, you know? They, people can sense how, you've, how you're... Acting in a certain situation. You know what I mean? And it's difficult, so so many different disabilities out there and like like I said, the hierarchy of it is unfair. Oh, they've got something more severe, blah blah blah. No, we're, we're all in the same boat. But at the same time, every disability is slightly different. You know? People just want to be treated normally in that sense. And some people are going to treat me different because they're from a different time where that was the case. Um, but yeah, don't judge and don't assume, basically. But if people are judging and assuming things about you, you don't have to care. I mean, there's ways to approach it, ways to treat that sort of thing. You can let it get you down, you can just be sitting in the corner, rocking back and forward, crying, or you can just take it and get on with it and like look back on it and laugh and use it as a learning curve. That's the best way. I mean, what are you going to do? 
you've got even from negative things you learn because like I heard recently um, your greatest gift comes brilliantly disguised as your greatest like nightmare or fear if that makes any sense I mean, it does because something re really bad that happens to you might change your life for the better and make open your eyes to the world and people around you I mean I don't want to get into much detail because you know, it's a difficult one of certain situations but someone who's maybe been able-bodied most of their life suddenly something health related happens to them and they end up with a disability and then then they realize oh this is it then this is what it's like to be a disabled person and this is how everyone else treats you and it will get to them and it will grind them down and it won't always have a good outcome and it gets to a lot of people pretty, pretty badly in that situation like someone who could be injured in battle in war come back like with an amputated limb or something and realize that they now have a disability but some people like that take it really badly and just don't go out and get depressed and stuff and some people do the opposite and just carry on where they left off yeah they got a limb missing or something but it, to them nothing's changed yeah they got that but it's opened their eyes to the world and it's made them more free liberated them from like the shackles of normal life and they're doing what, what they always wanted to do and loved despite that or as well as that no, in spite of that um, and maybe before they didn't have as much fun and they didn't help as much people and they weren't as kind and appreciative of life until it gets changed and flipped upside down and it doesn't take much <laughs> um, to realize that and people like that is inspiring when they just carry on I mean I'm just carrying on like as I would like I would be doing what I'm doing in some shape or form if I was able bodies you know maybe I would travel more that's for sure I travel a lot anyway it's not like I don't travel a lot There's certain places I can't get to or go to but you have to try even if it's like oh no it's not accessible I'm gonna try there was one time in Italy um, we couldn't get in someone's house uh, a friend of ours and then well it's like one of our in-laws or something like somehow related to us um, there was a big step to get in the house and there was like a curb as well so what we did was we got the, the top of an old table and laid it down as a ramp and this was my idea as well I said oh what do we do or oh, should we lift it and I, can we lift the chair I was like no you can't lift this it's way too heavy so then we made this ramp this makeshift ramp and I got in the house and that was it you know even if people said no you can't get in there I did but I'm saying just because you're like from, to everybody people right someone's to say well, yeah they we might talk a big game and like even me like act like I can do anything but there is a limit and you know you're not indestructible yeah it's a superpower but like it doesn't mean like you don't get tired <laughs> you don't get headaches or days when you just like don't feel like doing anything and my voice is completely gone yeah there's days when your voice goes too and you can't talk like me right now um, but you carry on um, then every day is a new day oh god my voice is gone back in a minute Yeah, what was I saying? I can't even remember if my voice went. went. <laughs> but yeah, ableism, I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's like, I think I'm overdoing it now. Um, but yeah, do let me know what's happened to you in that sense. Um, but yeah, you just got to not care too much, but at the same time, to it, everybody person, I'm saying, like, just because someone doesn't know if to take it to heart doesn't mean that it doesn't affect someone when you say when you assume something about someone else um, but yes yeah, the need to be treated normal that's it no better no worse and there's a lot of things that come within that but everyone's a person with feelings <laughs> I mean, when you talk to someone else you don't know what they're going through when you, you know when you get angry at someone on the bus you know 
Let's chill out. Like, let's know that. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you need to know anymore. Um, just know that you're not the, you're not alone. You're not alone, and like I said earlier, you only need three good friends, and you can take over the world. You know, you can do anything. And I've got that, and I'm lucky, and not everyone is. Even everybody, people, some people might not have a lot of friends, but you don't need a lot of friends. You need some tight friends, and that's it. I mean, that's not what I'm talking about with ableism. I mean, people that are close to you will respect you no matter what, and they won't treat you more or less. They'll treat you normal. You know, and you have banter, and that's it. Like with my friend, we just talk normally, like about a normal situation. Um, and you know. That's it, really. But yeah, I want to thank you guys again. It's been an interesting podcast, interesting debate. I hope you really thought about it or got you thinking on this debate in some way, way, shape, or form. If you're an able-bodied person and you're feeling guilty, in some ways, good. Um, <laughs> no, this is not like me for you situation. But if you're feeling guilty, yeah, honestly, um, don't take it to heart. Don't take it personally. Don't go and say sorry to every able person, disabled person, you've ever treated differently, you know, because I've treated people different for being different, you know? <laughs> I'm guilty of it too. Am I a hypocrite? Maybe, I don't know. For saying that, probably yeah. But I don't care. I mean, I'm past the point of caring. Just treat people how you want to be treated. That's it. Um, yeah. But I will forever be awkward with handshakes. That's guaranteed. If I was able-bodied, I still would be, probably. I'm just awkward anyway, sometimes. And it's just me. Um, but yeah, I want to thank you guys. Um, remember, just respect people how you want to be respected. Um, you want to be treated equally, you know? Fair. That's the word, fair. Because there's a lot of craziness out there, and and it's hard to just stay sane, really. I mean, don't end up like Joker, that's for sure. It is Halloween, I mean, don't wear too much face paint. I mean, some of you don't need it, you know, some people out there really don't need a Halloween mask. Um, that is just an old joke, but yeah, take it easy fam, and if I don't see you before it, happy Halloween, and it's a stupid holiday half the time. I don't like fancy dress or anything. It's not my thing, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm not too old for it, I'm not saying that, but I never did, even as a kid. We go trick or treat and we end up just throwing eggs at buses and stuff. We didn't do anything constructive. Get loads of sweets and then be ill for the next week. Um, but yeah, happy Halloween, guys. I'm Louisi21, also known as John Luca Louisi. Um, thank you, guys. And I'll see you in the next podcast. Stay tuned for more vlogs, though. And this is it from me for now. <laughs>